In the first part of this series, I showed you what a mask is and how it's represented in the layer stack. This time I'm going to show you that concept in practice. So as you remember, masks are here to help you stay inside the lines. So it's important to know what exactly you can apply a mask to in the first place. So here you see I've got a large painting on the left, and then I've got three small copies of that painting, each on their own layer. Now like last video, you saw how I can make a rectangular selection and apply that to a layer as a mask. Well, I can use the same process to a group of layers called a layer set. So here you see what I've called example set contains the three of these layers. So I can make a rectangular selection and with the word example set selected, I can click the layer mask button and apply one mask to those three layers. So here you say that they're still individual layers, but that they're all receiving that one rectangular mask. So you see that a layer mask can be applied to either an individual layer or to a layer set. So for practical example, let's take a look at this cube. So I'm going to want to stay inside the lines, but probably the coloring is going to take a number of layers. So this is a great example to make a layer set, put a mask on that set, and then paint inside of it. So I begin by creating a set, and then I want to make the selection. So I choose the polygon lasso and trace around the shape of my cube. Okay, and now that I've got the selection there, I'll turn it into a mask with the new mask button. Now any layers inside of this set will make sure that I paint inside the lines. So I can make a new layer, paint outside of these lines, refine the interior shape. But all the while, I don't have to worry about painting outside of the boundaries of my cube. So you can see that this would be incredibly useful. What you're doing is you're defining the borders once, and then don't have to worry about it for the rest of your drawing. Well, so now you might be thinking, well, that was really easy for a cube with straight edges, but what about my character that's got a really complicated outline? Well, as you can see, it works exactly the same for any shape. The only difference is how you go about creating that selection. In this example, the polygon lasso would not do a very good job. So for more info on this topic, check out my series on using the pen tool to make selections. Now I'm sure I'm not the only one that does this sort of layer set masking. If you've ever done this sort of technique, but maybe expand it in a different way that I don't mention here, I'd love to see it in the comments. So let us know if there's any special way that you like to do it. Stay tuned for part three of this masking series, where I'll show you how to have painterly edge control using the brush tool. I'm also always looking for new topics to put into upcoming videos. Anything you want to know about? Let me know in the comments.